Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's webinar on the all new user interface of Service Desk Plus Cloud. My name is Nikhil. I'm from the product support team, and I'm going to be the presenter for today's session. With that, I'm going to introduce you to the new Service Desk Plus. So the all new Service Desk Plus has more than 100 micro enhancements across various modules available in the application. It does definitely have a very pleasing in interface visually, and it has a, an unparalleled or it gives you an unparalleled user experience. So here are the list of uh, some major enhancements which we have brought in as a part of uh, the new user interface. So there is a layout uh, which can be customizable and there is a global theme setting which is now available as a part of the new user interface. We now have full-sized dashboards. The request views are split into three. You have a list view, a template view, and a Kanban view. Notifications, approvals, and recent items are now module segregated and time segregated. You also have a unified search bar for a unified search experience. And using the search bar, you could search about any data which is available in any module in the application. You also have smart view enabled dashboards. And you have a very interesting uh, row color feature, which is now available as a part of the new UI. And the table row colors for your requests can now be categorized or colored based on priority, status, and category. And the most requested feature is now available, which is the requester portal customization. So on the end user's perspective, uh, many users were asking, can, can the data be changed you know, for requesting a, a service or for, or for raising an incident? This can now be made customizable. So let's quickly get into the product uh, so that I could give you a heads up on what has been changed in the new user interface. I'm also going to parallelly switch to the old UI as well uh, so that you could get a better understanding or a better comparison view of what is made new and what is now available as a part of the new user interface. So this is the all new Service Desk Plus. So you now have a, a top bar which can be customizable. And the very first option which I wanted to show you was setup. So setup has now moved to the top right corner of the application screen, which was initially a part of uh, you know, the module list, which is available in the top bar. You have the personalization option, which is now available under profile. So you have a profile icon. And when you click on the profile icon, you have uh, you know, a couple of options here. So, you, so the navigation background can be changed from a charcoal black to polar white. So this is uh, the navigation background, which is available. And you have a layout personalization option. So initially, in the old user interface, there was just a top bar, which was not customizable. Right now, uh, in uh, the new user interface, the navigation menu has, uh, it has been made uh, customizable for end users. So you can either have it as a top bar, you could have it as a sidebar, or you could have a sidebar light. So the sidebar displays the names of the modules which are available based on your subscription. And the sidebar light gives you the icons which uh, would be displayed on the left of your application window. You also have one other option of viewing your current plan details from your profile section as well. So you need not navigate to the manage subscription icon anymore and view your plan details. This has now been made easily available under the profile section. So that's about the personalization, the profile icon, and uh, the, the one other option which I wanted to show you regarding the layout personalization option is that you now have a theme setting which is available under general settings. So as an admin, if you want to restrict this theme change for your uh, other technicians or your users, you can either allow by enabling or disabling this particular option. And you could choose what navigation uh, menu should be visible to them. Is it a top bar? Is it a sidebar or a sidebar light? So depending on this global setting, 
uh, all the other technicians would or would not be able to you know change the settings by clicking on the profile icon and you also have uh, your choice of colors so this is uh, your font colors so as in when so you do see that the theme settings for example has uh, a different color now as in when i navigate so this color customization is also available right here. This can be made a global uh, as a global setting as well. And you also have a font option, which can now be chosen either individually uh, based on the user's preference or as a global setting. So this is about the personal personalization uh, front in the new user interface of Service Desk Plus. Uh, coming to branding, in the old user interface, you would have your instance uh, type or your instance name being visible right here and the other instances which are a part of your organization would be visible under uh, your profile section right so this has now been uh, changed so as in when you click on the nine dot option on the top left corner of your screen you'd be able to view all the different uh, instances you have along with your logos and you also have the ESM portal and the ESM directory option, which comes within this section. So initially, the ESM uh, portal and the ESM directory uh, would fall under this section. So when you click on the ESM directory, you would navigate to this page where you could uh, you know, customize your organization's name, your company logo, etc. And you have your service desk instances where you could go ahead and edit your instance and make a change to your logo as such. So this is now uh, moved. So your organization logo, which usually appears on the top left corner in the old user interface, is no longer available there. So you would notice your instance logo and your um, instance name being visible on the top left corner. And as in when you click on the nine dots, which is the instances option, you would view your uh, organization or your company's logo right here. And your ESM directory is visible here as well. So that's about uh, the branding part which we have in the new user interface. So coming to dashboards. So in the home tab, you have dashboards. And when you navigate to the old user interface, you would notice that the dashboard scheduler and the other options were available as a sidebar. Uh, in the old user interface again. And in the new UI, this has been moved to the top. So you can either uh, you know, have your layout customization as a top bar or sidebar, but all these options which are available within every module have now been uh, standardized as a top, uh, top bar or a top section. So your dashboard, scheduler, tech availability, and your task section would be available in this uh, panel. And you now have dashboards which can be projected individually in different monitors as a full screen option. So by making use of enter by making use of enter full screen option, you could project this particular dashboard view depending on your choice of dashboard which you've created. So you could uh, create your own customizable dashboard as well. And uh, if, you, if you want to choose to project this uh, or, or display this in a separate monitor in your organization, that can now be made easily available by making use of the full screen option, which is available. And talking about widgets, which are available within um, a, a specific dashboard, uh, you can now make changes to the type of, um, uh, you know, uh, graphs which are being displayed. So is, uh, should I have a, a bar chart or a pie chart or uh, a, a funnel or even a pyramid type of a chart is completely up to you know, the end user. So depending on uh, the user's um, preference or the user's liking, they can go ahead and make any change to the type of uh, charts which are now available. So these are powered by Zoho charts. And these are, and each and every single chart has uh, their own style of customization. And the customization options are now available as a part of the new user interface. And uh, when you click on any option or any data within a chart, that would uh, take you to the list view of the request, for example. So this used to be the initial behavior in the old user interface as well. But 
right now we have uh, a smart view which can be enabled for the dashboards so under the dashboard feature you could come here to your filter option and you could enable smart view so by doing this the request would no longer take you or the results would no longer take you to the list view but you would have a smart view in which you could directly view the details of the request without having to click on a request from the list view and take a look at it so this is one option which is available for all the charts so as in this is a global setting which can be enabled and as in when you click on any any uh, you know uh, data in any chart it would directly take you or open the smart view which is now made available so let's close this let's exit the full screen and uh, talking about uh, list view when you navigate to requests let's uh, see what are the changes which are uh, which are done in the request module and uh, a couple of changes in the other modules as well so in the list view for example if we navigate to requests initially you would have uh, a filter on the right corner which says filter by uh, you know incidents or filter by service requests so this filter option is now made available within the view filter so when you click here you have uh, the list of your favorite views which you've created your groups and your predefined uh, views as well and you have the request type which is now made available so you can choose between incidents service requests or both right so this filter option ha has now moved within uh, the view option you had uh, the settings in the old user interface which was available on the top right corner of your table so the setting has now uh, or, or the search i'm sorry so the search has now moved to the uh, top left corner and you have a column chooser which is now available on the top left corner of your table you also have the table setting which was available initially uh, on the right corner as well as usual so from here you could choose if uh, you want a compact uh, display density or a comfort display density and as usual you could make changes to your records per page as well so should you have ten, just 10 records or 100 records or any other value depends on the end user and uh, the most interesting feature and the most asked feature was table row color settings so table row color settings is now made available so you could click on this particular option you could enable your your uh, row color settings right here and when you edit row color settings you would uh, now have an option to choose your row colors based on your status priority or your category uh, for example if you want to choose a specific color for a high priority and if you want to categorize your low priority in different colors you could do that as well so by default uh, you know it's null so you wouldn't have any color you you get to choose the list of uh, priority or status or category uh, which whichever option you choose the corresponding data uh, or the corresponding options would be visible right here so let's say for example let's choose high uh, and let's choose a color so you now get to choose uh, the colors for a specific value and uh, you can make use of either these standard colors which are available or you could make use of the color palette so if you want to choose your own color that can also be made available right now so once you select this that becomes uh, my preferred choice of color and let's choose a couple of other options just to show you how it looks like let's choose normal right here or medium and let's choose a couple of other colors so for green uh, let's go with low and let's choose medium as let's say blue right and uh, you have an opacity option as well so that depends on your liking and uh, there is also one other option so you have an applies to uh, or a filter criteria right here so it's not really uh, necessary that uh, uh, you know end users would want their entire row to be highlighted in a specific color right so for instance if you just want to highlight the priority column alone you could do that so depending on the list of uh, uh, you know columns you have in the uh, request module you can now choose or search for a specific uh, field 
or a column name and that can be uh, chosen as your preferred choice as well so you can also cancel this to uh, you know enable this for all your requests in the list view so this gives you an insight on how many uh, high priority requests are there versus how, how many low priority requests are there so that's about the row color feature and the row color feature is available as a part of the list view which we are currently in and as a part of uh, the template view so we now have three different views so you have a list view which uh, which i just showed you the template view would still have the colors but the entire row would not be uh, populated based on the color it's just the checkbox which would be highlighted depending on the ro row color which you've chosen so that's about uh, your row color setting you can choose to enable or disable this for your template view alone or for uh, or as a global setting as well so you now have this flexibility as well as a part of your uh, row color setting and uh, the other view which i was talking about is the kanban view so you have three views now the list view the template view and the kanban view so the kanban view now uh, allows you to group by status priority or technician so right now the kanban view is available only for the request module and you can now group by using status priority or technician assignments you have a display density you can either mark it as a compact display density or a comfort display density depending on your choice and at any point of time if you want to work on a specific request or if you want to change the status you could directly you know change uh, or drag and drop the request to the necessary filter and that's going to mark this uh, the status as uh, you know from analysis or in progress to open depending on your choice so this can also be made for your uh, priority and your uh, technician assignments so you have uh, a manage priority option or a customization option which is available so with this you would be able to pin cards to the left so uh, if you want to navigate to the right to identify what are the other types of priority or technicians or statuses which are available and if you want to still uh, pin a few cards to the left so that it will be easy for you to quickly navigate and make your assignments uh, yeah so you you can do that now by making use of this pin feature you also have uh, this pin feature which can be you know uh, triggered by dragging and dropping a value uh, within the pinned priority section uh, you can choose to unpin it from this section as well. You can also reorganize. So, for instance, if you want to view your uh, critical incidents first or your medium incidents first, that can also be made available uh, or it can be customized. So, you can basically, uh, you know, prioritize your order of your priority status or your technician assignments by making use of this manage priority section. So, this is about the Kanban view, which is uh, now available as a part of the new user interface. So uh, let's navigate to a couple of other modules uh, to, to to highlight the, uh, the the other options or enhancements which were made to them. So uh, you would notice that uh, the search and the column chooser is more of a global setting now. It has been moved to the left and the table uh, setting remains on the right side. So this is pretty much across all the modules. And we have the list view and the template view, which is uh, made as a standard choice of option for all the modules so that you know uh, end users can make use of their, their own choice and navigate. So we are in the change module at the very moment and we are in the list view. So you also have uh, a template view, which gives you an insight on the task and the workflow uh, and a few other details of the change request which you're working on. And you also have a calendar view as a part of your changes. So for instance, if you want to choose a specific month and if you want to, uh, want to know what or, or on what dates a specific release or a change is being triggered, you can now uh, make use of uh, the calendar option uh, or the calendar view to make use of uh, the, you know, your assignments or your uh, change and release assignments and downtimes. So you have a filter option which uh, you know, showcases just the changes or the changes and releases as well. Right, so that's about uh, the change management module. Uh, the next module is projects. So when you navigate to projects, 
you would once again have the list view and the template view right here. And apart from this, you have a, a Gantt view right here. So the template view gives you an insight on uh, the milestones which you have, the percentage of milestones which are completed, um, and the task information along with the schedule options. Of course, you could choose what columns you you know you would like to view from this section. When you click on uh, the Gantt view, that would take you to uh, your project Gantt chart, where you get to view all the details of your projects which are available uh, in a calendar view. And when you uh, click on any specific project, for example, you get to view what is, uh, you know, or what are the different milestones which are associated within them, and what are the interrelated tasks as well. So you get an overview on the whole project and all the projects which you are working on in your organization. So you also have uh, a, a table or a time setting which can be uh, customized. So you could show the actual time, the schedule time, both, and you have a zooming option. Should it be on a weekly basis or a daily basis or an hourly basis? Of course, you have the years and months as well. So this is about uh, the project Gantt chart which you have uh, as a part of the new user interface. You also have a resource management section. So from here, this is once again uh, a, a time or uh, a, a, a view in which you could make use of uh, your load, right? So depending on your uh, assignments uh, or your load assignments, you could ensure that your uh, projects and your tasks are being assigned to the right technicians and that the time and the load are being managed so this gives you an overview on uh, you know when a specific task is about to start and who is working on a task and at what point of time right so uh, that's about the resource management section which uh, you have and let's navigate to the top sections which uh, we haven't covered yet so you have notifications which are now time segregated so um, when you navigate to your home screen or, or let me take let, let me take another tab. So when you click on notifications, you would notice that you have uh, notifications which are now uh, searchable. So you could search for any uh, notification as such, and uh, you also have an option to uh, view when the notification came in. So the notifications are now time segregated. So you would uh, you know find older requests or older notifications as well. And you could directly you know, click right here or even delete the notification which you received. So that's about the notification. In the old user interface, the notification was available right here. So you had a small box in which you could uh, view the notifications. Uh, but right now, you have a, a much wider view for the notifications. You can now search for them as well. Uh, navigating to approvals. All your pending approvals from various modules, be it requests, be it changes, or any other module would be a module segregated. And you could take actions from right here. So you could say uh, approved right here. And then you could go ahead and click on approve. And that's going to mark your request as, um, an, uh, you know, uh, the status of the approval as uh, approved. So this is also uh, time segregated. So as and when your requests come in, you could uh, take a quick action on your approvals part. You have recent items. So all your recent visits in your application can now be tracked uh, by making use of the recent item section. So this uh, uh, recent item section is also time segregated. So you have uh, a today filter, which displays all the items which we visited today. And uh, we do have uh, you know other dates and other items or uh, you know other modules data as well so you could directly navigate to any module uh, or any asset which you have been recently working on without having to navigate to the respective module so these are the options which are now available as a part of the new ui which are searchable and which are time segregated so under quick actions you can now make use of keyboard shortcuts to raise a new announcement to raise a new uh, you know, to create a new requester, to raise a new request, to raise a new change, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you now have the quick action, which is uh, made available for all users. You can make use of this and take quick actions in the application. 
So you also have a unified search bar. So as a part of all these options, you have the unified search bar. So for example, if I want to take a look at any asset, right? Uh, I could search for the module which I'm looking for. And right here, I could type in the, the name of my asset and directly navigate to my asset in the asset module. So whatever uh, uh, we type, the corresponding results would be visible. And I can navigate uh, within the uh, asset section to view the details of the asset. So talking about assets, you have uh, a refreshed relationship view as well. So, so that you can get to view your associated um, assets, your, connect, your connected versus your attached assets. And you have your associations which are available right here as well. Uh, what if an asset is critical and if you want to quickly identify um, you know what are the possible impact which which could cause if this particular machine goes down right so you could navigate to the cndb module or search for this particular ci in the cndb module so you can also make use of the unified search bar you could search for this specific ci so I'm going to type in as prod. So that's going to navigate me directly to the CNDB module and populate the results. So I could click on this CI and view what are my relationships. So I could uh, view my relationships from the list which is available here. Or I can also make use of the relationship map uh, which is available right here as a part of the new user interface. And we do have horizontal, vertical, and force views as well. So you can now uh, have a hierarchical view on what could be the possible impact, or you could navigate to each and every single uh, service, view what are the details about the service which is available. So for instance, let's click on uh, the vertical option or the vertical view uh, option. When you click on the CI, the detail of the CI would populate on the right uh, right side of the application. You can also click on the uh, relationship icon, which is available here, to know what are the possible uh, you know impacts. So, for in, for instance, if this uh, server goes down, all the, you know all these other services would be impacted, right? So, if you want to know what are the connectors or who should you contact uh, on uh, you know, on a, on a quick uh, basis, you can make use of the CMDB section and the relationship map, and that could give you a high-level insight on what is, uh, you know, what is a critical asset versus what are the possible uh, elements which could be impacted as well. So that's about the unified search bar. So you can literally search for any data available in any module which is available in the application, and when you navigate to setup, uh, this the option is also available. So you also have a search uh, option for your setup. For, so for instance, if you want to take a quick look on the sites which you have, you can just type in sites and click on the result and that's gonna directly navigate you to the uh, you know option which you're looking for. So you also have an option uh, called search in setup. So as and when you are navigating anywhere in the setup, you can also make use of this option to uh, navigate quickly. So as a part of uh, the end user's view or the requester portal view, we have now introduced uh, the requester portal customization. So under uh, setup, you have the requester portal option right here. So when you click on requester portal, that's going to take you to the requester portal customization uh, option right here. So you can either preview or customize your uh, current, you know, current request of view. So this is your preview. So this is how uh, my current request of view looks like. If I want to customize or probably add another uh, you know, tab right here for my projects uh, or make a change to the template on the whole, make changes to the widgets which are available, that can now be made possible. And uh, you can also now make changes to the content which is available within these boxes as well. So, and even within the buttons which are available. So I can literally change the, the phrase I'm facing an issue with a completely customizable uh, you know, wording. And let me show you how that is done. So under requester portal customization, you could click on customize. 
So that's going to take you to the customization page. You can uh, click on manage widgets. So that's going to give you an insight on what your current widget column looks like or how many columns uh, it, it's currently displaying. You could choose your widget column to display from one column all the way up to four columns. You can also make use of uh, the list of widgets which are available and the new URL widget to uh, customize your home screen or your requester portal. You can uh, you know, cha make changes to the template by clicking on this uh, edit icon. So this gives you, so the, the customization page has three views. So you have a code view, you have a preview, and you have a split view as well. So as in when you tweak uh, or make any changes to the code, you can uh, view uh, what are the changes which are being you know, uh, reflected for the end user as in when you type right here as well. You also have a select template option. So when you click on the select template, uh, you initially you had just uh, you know these four options. So we have now introduced uh, four more uh, templates which you can make use of, which is the university, health and your HR options. So depending on your uh, liking, you could choose your own template and you could customize them. So let's go with this template for now and let's close this page. So for instance, uh, this is how my end user portal looks like or my request a customization portal looks like. If I want to add a logo and another tab right here, I could navigate probably to the code view or split view, depending on my preference. And I could make a few changes to the code. So right now, let's add a logo and see how it looks like. So on the second line, I'm going to place that. And at the very bottom, I'm going to paste this piece of code. And when you paste that, you have a background image which is being fetched. And this is my uh, logo. So this can be made uh, customizable. And if I want to add another uh, you know, tab, which is similar to this, I could navigate right here, populate another tab. So you could copy paste uh, the previous code, which, which was available for your, uh, for, your, for your previous tab. And you could make changes to that as well. Right. So for instance, I've copied the code for solutions. So if you want to make a change to this, so instead of I'm looking for solutions, if you want to say view my projects, right? So that can now be made uh, possible. So when you scroll down, you could uh, you know see that the change is being reflected right now. So let's uh, choose view my and let's say projects right here. And um, as a part of the click action, instead of view solution, you could change um, you know, the attribute to view your projects. And you could rename this as projects. And you could say view all my projects. And when you scroll down to the preview, you would now notice that you know, the changes were reflected as a part of uh, you know, the new user interface and as a part of the request a homepage customization as well. So I can make uh, this change available to the end user by saving this change. And uh, you also have an option to make use of the most used service templates, your my summary and your assets and your announcement section. So these are widgets, which, uh, which I shown you earlier. So you can also make use of canned widgets and these are the attributes which you could actually uh, modify. So you could view requests, you could view changes, projects, solutions, you could create requests, report incidents, create service requests, and you could have a search bar similar to this as well. So that's about uh, the requester homepage customization and the new user interface. All right, thank you so much everyone for joining in or tuning in to today's webinar. If you have any questions, please reach out to our support channel, or you could reach out to me, or you could reach out to hello at servicedesplus.com, and we'd be happy to assist you. Thank you so much. Stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.